Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in with another episode of Talks with Tony. Late tonight, had a long day. Um, blessed my barber today with a car, and um, I was keeping that secret just in case. But I had a friend of mine who he just went full time. One of my son's teammates' dads just went full time as a videographer, so I thought of him and you know hired him to come and kind of record it just because it's a special build it took four months it still ain't all the way done still got to do a few little pieces to it but it just show you how long it take when uh the builder is uh busy and um but want to bless him you know being there supporting me he went on some tours with me he cut my hair for free and i just see him get up and work hard every day you know 12 hour days 16 hour days every day doing the same thing and standing on his feet all day serving people and doing a service that changed somebody's life you know the way he do my hairline you'll think i'm young that's why i got this hat on now because i need to get in this chair and get this hairline together but he changed your life i take this hat off you might drop your phone and run and he do that for twenty dollars you know change somebody's life like a haircut if we could afford it would be a hundred dollars and so i i just i love to see people who working hard not making excuses don't take days off work on his birthday work on holidays you know or come cut me on his day off on on sunday and I just, I really want to be a blessing to them just to encourage them, you know, because we come from them street dreams to where you want to get nice things with fast money. And then now to be living right and doing the right thing, I just want to show them that, hey, God can show up and show out and bless to where you still can have some of the desires of your heart with hard work and honesty and faithfulness and integrity is come and keep going. So when he finished the video i'm gonna post it on my page it probably has some you know secular uh copyrighted music so y'all it ain't you know forgive that you know, i'll probably have a guy make a version without you know one of these little songs out here but um it just i'm just like wow you know i had to bless the man and so that's what i was doing today so that's why my video late everything was running running behind and y'all forgive me for that now. Y'all forgive me for that. But uh, just wanted to share that. And not to boast or brag. But just to say, you never know who watching you. You never know where your blessing going to come from. While you working and you tired and you frustrated, you don't never know who God blessing or putting on their heart to be a blessing to you. You never know. And then when you get blessed, be looking to be a blessing instead of just looking to be blessed. That's a lesson in itself. Hey, Tony, I would like to be enlightened about what men think about dating heavier women. Now, I've heard some of your videos from years ago where you suggest that women should get their body right. It was part of your three B's, brand, body, and brain, I believe. I believe. Please give us heavier women some insight on what we may encounter from men in the dating world and why. For instance why do they always approach us with that or have a sexual comment on any part of our body i mean the most foolish like your arm looks so smooth why do they approach us in a more blunt provocative and disrespectful manner i know it doesn't stand true for all and i hate to generalize men and heavier women but oftentimes I feel like men think that heavier women will settle for their nonsense, like we're looked at as if we are desperate, when in fact we be turning heads and getting a lot of male attention. As a woman who has a professional career as a school psychologist, making six figures, drives a luxury vehicle, 34, no kids, and lives alone, why do men come at me with the slick subliminal comments come and try to borrow money or come with the controlling behavior like trying to dominate me simply overdoing it i never mention anything i have 
not even my occupation, yet somehow they believe I got a personal ATM waiting for them to ask for money. I will add that I am pretty. I would drop a pic headshot to show you so you can see what I'm looking like, but that's inappropriate as you have a wife. I mean, most of the men will date you, try and lay with you, but as far as being in a relationship, they always have some sort of excuse like they're working on themselves, trying to get their money right, or they aren't ready for a relationship. Please spill the beans about why this is when it comes to heavier women. P.S. I have dropped 20 pounds in this and, and, and let's just say these men are looking thirsty. It's terrible how different they treat you. Thank you. God bless you now. M dot E D comma E D dot S. What's that? A Masters of Education or Education Sciences? School psychologist. That's just to say she finna go to this here school and she ain't finna stop till she get where she going now. You hear me? Sister got all the way there. So say she touching six figures. 34. No kids. Got a luxury vehicle. All right. Well, you you really asked the question and answered it in, in the question. You know, you pretty much said what you know the men are doing and it's kind of like you know we look at the media and this is what a grown boy you know and and not necessarily just a grown boy but humans in general you know humans in general because we have societal standards we have societal norms and society puts these certain things out there like you need a degree to you know be somebody like if you don't have a degree you are nobody and then if we have that degree we'll wear that in our signature like in my signature it says tony a gaskins jr founder of and i run them sites off oh you gonna know oh i'm finna let you know now and that's probably doing the most in that signature but no i'm finna let you know i just need you to know and you just know anybody uh emailing you okay somebody who thought of some websites is emailing you you finna know and just like on yours how it got your name then it got m dot e d comma e d dot s i don't even know what that say you see what i mean to me it said med eds it said med eds but i don't even know what that stand for because i don't have that level of schooling and now, so how you put that down there and it say, and then up under it say school psychologist. So you see how you wearing that with a sense of pride. Like, listen, I don't work hard and rightfully so. You ain't wrong for it. Don't think I'm saying you wrong for it, but I want you to understand how you wearing that with a sense of pride. It's an accomplishment because the world has said, if you can accomplish a bachelors a master's or whatever you are somebody you are smart you are dedicated you are focused you are diligent you are set apart and you are destined for success that's what we are conditioned to believe and so there are certain images that we're shown in the movies in the music videos in the magazines so if all of our images if majority of our images were women of a certain figure then everybody would look at that figure and say that is the figure that you need to be to be successful but when you look in the acting world when you look in all the movies you have seen how many women do you see that are you know your same size and that you say, oh, I see myself. And so, or even if, if it's your race, in certain industries, if it's your gender. So when I look on television at people who are giving advice on a reality show, most of them are, it says doctor, such and such. And 
So I look at on there and I don't see myself. Now, yes, I've been on television because the people were my clients before they got a TV show. But the network ain't just called me and put me on there because I don't have doctor before my name or no letters after my name other than junior, J-R. And that ain't enough for them. So when I look on there, I could feel less than. And it's so many days that I look on there and I'm like, man, I need to go to college, man. I need to go and finish college, get my bachelor's, get my master's. But then I say to myself, that's man's validation. God has already validated me. God has already sent me the clients that I need, sent me the audience that I need, sent me the support that I need. Like that degree ain't going to do nothing for me other than get me the respect of people that I don't need their respect anyways if they can't respect me based off my God-given wisdom, but without them letters. And some people wrap their whole life up in that. And they say, well, no, you still could get it because it'll do this. It ain't going to make me no more money. It may get me on TV faster or easier, but I don't want to be on TV because it's fake. It's not real. I can't do what I'm doing right here. Give you this real insight. They want take one, take two, take three. So when you look at this, when you see the world, the men that's approaching you, they programmed by that. So they looking and this is what they're saying. And this is why I tell all my clients. I tell all my clients this. Uh, women clients. I tell all my clients this. The man's looking at you. And he's saying she doesn't have enough representation in the media. So she must be insecure about that. And I see this a lot with skin complexions. Uh, it's a lot of it's certain like, you know, when you dark skin. If you look and you see all white and all light skin, that make you feel a certain way. If it, it, certain white people who watch the NBA and the NFL and they get mad because they see 80 percent black men and you could watch college basketball and all 10 people on the court in the men's game and the women's game could be all black people. And so it's certain people of other races, Asian, Caucasian, you know, Hispanic. They look and say, this is not fair. Why are we not included? We have to include them in our schools. Why don't they have a quota that they have to meet in sports? And some people get upset about that. And so the thing is, is a person starts to feel insecure if they don't have representation. I work with athletes and whenever it's a white guy, he referenced his himself as a white guy. Like, hey, I'm a white guy who can hoop. You know, I'm a white guy who just love to hoop. And it's like, what does it matter that you're white? But he's like saying, I'm a sore thumb. I stick out like a sore thumb. And so that's the same thing when, you know, some uh, uh, a woman who, as you said, heavier women, a heavier woman may may refer to herself as I'm I'm a big girl, but I sure can dress. Yeah, I got some extra meat on my bones, but I sure make money. And and other people may be like, okay, well, why you had to mention your body size and your body shape? And it's because she's self conscious about it because of what the media shows. Now I got a client who is a full figured woman. OK, and she don't have a shy bone or a insecure bone in her body. And I was like, man, I wish that could be just spread amongst all women. And I remember hearing a radio guy say, why does he was like, why does the and it was an insensitive comment. But what he said was, why does the, you know, women built like this be so insecure and then the women built like this. He was basically saying, he said, why does the smaller women insecure and why are the women who have more of a figure or, you know, more meat on their bones so confident? And, and it was kind of like, the question was kind of confusing because it's like, well, why shouldn't she be confident? And just because this woman over here is petite does that automatically mean that she has a birthright of confidence, that she just naturally gonna be confident? And so 
these things kind of come up and what happens is people go by stereotype so if the media taking shows black men all the time as criminals then even me i'm locking my doors and i see a brother walking by what you what what you fit to do and i might be programmed by the media now when you if you see somebody walking by black guy it's late at night or it's whenever and, and if you're gonna sit there and be like you know what that's my brother. I ain't finna judge. I'm finna leave this door right on lock. Or do you hit that lock button? All right. I know you're a brother, but I'm still finna be safe. So then what I do to make myself feel good, if an Asian walking by, if a Hispanic walking by, if a white walking by, I hit that button on them and let them hear that lock sound. Just, just, so say, just so I'm saying, hey, I ain't finna discriminate. So... What happened is, is when you watch uh, the media, they will show women who are, you know, of a different body shape than what they normally show, whatever that body shape may be. Sometimes they'll show a shorter person. Sometimes they'll show a person who has more meat on their bones. Sometimes they're uh, voluptuous, full figure. Uh, whatever you, the terms y'all use, I don't know what the politically correct terms are. Um, she said heavier women. And so sometimes they may show heavier women sitting there eating, eating a bunch, stuffing their face. You know, may show heavier women like in Precious, the movie Precious, getting up, ew, getting cussed out, getting done wrong, you know, getting overlooked, getting mistreated. So they creating the stereotypes. They're creating the stereotypes and they're pushing it out into the world. So now the viewers, men, who are the most easily programmed people on the face of the earth, men are. It's the truth. If we watch something on YouTube, a man got a new car, now we want that car. If I, I remember I watched guys on YouTube, they got certain cars, and I'm getting ready to go get one of my cars, and my wife said, baby, what are you thinking about? She said, do you think them men would drive that car if they were able to get the car that you have mm. you know what you got a point they driving the top of the line that where they finances is at right now but i'm sitting here watching their car channel it's making me want to go get one of them cars and i think the car ugly really don't like the car but it's just monkey see monkey do i just finished eating Okay, if I tuck this TV on and I see me some dominoes, uh, yeah, I like order cheese, uh, medium pan cheese pizza, yeah, for delivery. Okay, all right, thank you. Just like that, it my wife got so much stuff because I'm on the mailing list. Every day I get an email from one of these stores. Y'all get mad with me for sending you one email, two emails a, a week. These stores email every single day. And they like, get off the list then if you don't want to get the email. They email every day. And I'm in there shopping. I'm just like, oh my goodness, let me get off the email list. I done bought my wife so much stuff because I get them emails. And so we easily program. So when a man looks and he sees all of the representation, when you name the top actresses, when you name the top actresses that you could think of, how what how do how do they, they what are their body types? What are their races? What have you? Now you'll think of Queen Latifah, but Queen Latifah in real life date women. Then you'll think of uh, is her name Sigourney Weaver, who played Precious. I don't I can't remember the name. You'll think of her. She has a different body type than what is normally shown to us. Then you have Monique. And uh, then you have the lady from The Help who put that boo-boo in Miss Minnie Pie. I think the lady was named Miss Minnie who got the boo-boo pie. Um, you got her. Her figure is not always shown. It's not common in 
a lot of the movies. So, and then you got a few others that we could think of. And then on, on in the Caucasian, you have the lady. It's her name, Tammy, and she's the comedian. And um, her figure on the Caucasian side of things. On that side, she the only one I could think of. And then the other, the other one, um, I, don't, I can't remember her name, but she's a comedian too. But when you look at, even when you look at, on the the steer the, the roles. They will give the role now in just right with Common. They put Queen Latifah in Common. Now, if Queen Latifah date men in real life, it's, it the movie could have been a little more realistic. But just her energy from being in Set It Off and being a rapper and all that, it just was hard to believe. But they tried to push that narrative, but it was hard to believe. It's like, okay, you're going to push that narrative. Get a woman who naturally like her some men. And I ain't saying nothing, you know, bad about Queen Latifah. I'm just saying she like her. Oh, she want her a woman, not no man. So it didn't come off believable in the movie. But look what they show us. So they put the woman with a different figure than what they normally show. They make her, she got to be funny. She got to be sloppy. You know, like like the uh, the Caucasian ladies I mentioned, they all they had them sloppy and doing crazy stuff and just all comedy. They don't get to play a sexy role, a cute role, a smart role, sophisticated role. Now, yeah, if you're a movie buff, you could think of one or two examples, but I'm talking about the majority. And so what happens is this programming. So a man will look at a woman and not just about heavier women. But in every aspect, this goes. But when he looks at the woman who is a heavier woman, he says to himself, she must be insecure because her figure is not praised and promoted in the world. So she must be insecure. She must be desperate by now. She must be frustrated by now. She must be willing to settle. But then here's the thing. In a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, we go by stereotypes, but then when the stereotype proves itself to be true, then it reinforces what you thought. So it's like, if they showing me black men as criminals, and then I turn on, I'm looking at the crime rate, and it's a lot of black on black, it's like, well, man, is the stereotype true? And if I mess around and get robbed like I did by some by some brothers, I'm like man, is the stereo true? Cause y'all had cause y'all had let a white man rob me just to disrupt the narrative. Y'all had to go and play into the stereotype. So then what happened is, if you see a woman who is a heavier woman, and you see her catering to this man, he driving her car, he living off of her. She flying him around the country, around the world. She make the money. He don't make what she make. And he living off her. And he may be medium built. He may be petite, slim built. And so then it look like, man, she just buying her, man. So then it reinforces the stereotype in the man mind. And then he'll have this woman who she doing. Now, when I always mention to y'all in college, we had it was a heavier woman and if i had to guesstimate i would say mm, probably mm, you know probably around 300 pounds and she was a caucasian woman and what she would do is she would let 10 to 30 men line up in a line outside of her dorm room and she would <coughs> each one off we really didn't know what was going on in there. I'm, some of them might have dove in, might have dove on in there and went for the real deal instead of the, <laughs> but she would do that. So what that did, and, and, and she was like the one, it was a small school. She was like the one woman that was uniquely built her way. So what that did is it sent a message that said, oh, this is how women who look like her behave. 
And then women who look the opposite of her, they don't do that. No other woman, the opposite of her, has a line outside of their door taking care of everybody in that way. So a man will take that one little incident and now he says, oh, it's just true. And so what happens is, is if, and, and what you got to realize, if the world not praising, you got to forgive my computer's about to cut off. I, I'm not reading notes. Somebody's like, oh, you be reading notes because you be looking at And like, if I was reading notes, what do that matter? But um, my computer's about to cut off. So if the world take and say, updates not installed. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm trying to get my updates on my computer. If the world take and say, you know, oh, you insecure. Oh, this is the way you got to act. This is the way you got to be. You got to be loud. If you're going to be a heavier woman, you got to be loud. You got to be funny. You got to be easy for a man. And they depict this in the movies. They depict it in the music. And they showing this. And so now some women who are of that figure starts to believe that. And they start to live it out. Because it's just all programming about we told how to feel about ourselves. If you're a black person in America, you're told to feel less than. You're told to, I was talking to a white man today who was transporting the vehicle from a barber and he was telling about his friend. He was like, well, Tony, when you come up looking like all this money and you pull up in this kind of car, these expensive clothes, you make people want to overcharge you. I said, listen, he said, well, he said, I went with my friend and he dressed like a bum and he went in there and he got them to take so much money off the truck he wanted to buy. I said, as a black man in America, if I dress like your friend, a salesman wouldn't even talk to me. I say, I go in and look like money and still get dead wrong. And I got money and I got money to sue. And they still try me. I go in there and look like money and still get ignored. We'll stand in there 15 minutes and a single person won't speak to me because of the color of my skin. And somebody else of another race. And, and you know what? I was just talking to a man at a dealership. And he said, and he didn't catch himself say this. He said, you know, if we take advantage of people and we mistreat them, if we do this to a black person, Hispanic person, Asian person, and then one day we end up doing that to a white person, that's when we really messed up. He didn't even realize that his fear of taking advantage of minorities is rooted in if it happens to a white person, that's when they're going to have to pay a price. But it's because, and he Hispanic himself, but that's because of the way society, the media conditions us to think and to feel and to believe. So a man is treating you based on what the world has showed him and told him this how you treat a woman like this because she insecure because she feels less than so what you have to do is you got to take y'all forgive my update my computer at the same time i'm doing this this is how you know this right here i'm just coming from the heart we're just flowing okay you got to take and you change the narrative so what i do to shift the narrative when I go out, I tip 25% or I tip 30% because they may say in their mind, black people don't tip. But now when they get my tip, now they for the rest of their life, they can't say at their little cookout, oh, black people do not tip. They're going to say, oh, that's not true. I just had a guy last night who tipped 30%. And he was the first person. It was the first time that ever happened to me. So I take and shift the narrative. I take and break the stereotype. They say, oh, black men ain't in the home. I'm in the home at every game. So now they say, oh, well, can't say that because we we know somebody that's there. Oh, black people just make their money from drugs or from sports or from mu music. When they see me do something, you know, get on a private jet or something, then they say, oh, they, um, every single time I'm doing something that is on a, another financial level, a white gentleman says, you a ball player? Because in his mind, he's been con conditioned to believe every single time. He's been conditioned to believe 
that if a black man has money, he plays sports or he does music. And I rocked their world. I said, no, I'm actually an author. I said, a guy asked me today. He said, what do you do for a living? Because he, he seen my vehicle. He said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm an author. He said, an author like of books? You write books? I said, yeah, I write books. Wow. I said, yeah, I'm an author. I'm a life coach. I'm a speaker. Wow. And at 80 years old, before the Lord get ready to call him home in another how many of a year? 10 years, 20 years, pray he get 20 or more. For the Lord get ready to call him home for the first time in his life, he met a black author at 80 years old for the first time in his life. And his two sisters, one of his sisters is 81 and she just write her first book. And he met a 36 year old black male who's written over 20 books, shift the narrative. See, so what we have to do is you, you can't internalize it. You can't internalize it when somebody comes and they have you stereotyped, they're judging you or they approach you a certain way. You gotta boom, stop them in their tracks, flip that on them. And then he say, whoa, this woman here, I assume she was insecure because of this. I assume she was desperate because of this. I assume she'll be happy to cater to me. And I remember, I assumed that when I was a young man, I was a teenager, and I'm thinking I'm finna get me some from a young lady because she was built different. And so I'm thinking she is ecstatic to have me holler at her. And I, I'll never forget, she had a thick old tongue because she, all the time, and it was something her and her brother had. They was twins. He had a thick tongue too. And and so I'm thinking in my head, okay, she got a thick tongue. All right. She is not normally what I date and talk to because I'm out here conditioned by the world. She ain't never had no boyfriend. She ain't never had no man try to holler at her. So here when I shoot my shot, she finna be ecstatic. When I tell you I shot my shot, listen, uh huh. Turn it. I don't do that. I don't do that. I ain't finna do that. I ain't finna do that with you. What? When I tell you I sat there in bed. All day long. I ain't even want nothing. I was too young. I wouldn't even know what to do with it. If I got it. But when I tell you that thing hurt my ego. Because the world had said to me. If a woman looked like this here. And it wasn't her uh, weight. Just I mean she was fuller than other girls her age but it wasn't like you know that that wasn't the only thing she had everything on her at that time they was in the struggle they was in a real struggle they lived in the hood of hoods in the hood they was at the hood the bottom of the hood and so i'm thinking i'm finna be god's gift to her life she turned me down you know what and I probably was, I don't know, 13, could have been 16. But that shifted, that shifted my mindset to see every woman as equal. To see, to never judge a woman based on what the media has conditioned me to believe. The media say, oh, if a woman is this height, if a woman has this size nose, if a woman has these kind of teeth, if a woman has this skin complexion, this skin texture, this hair texture, then she is insecure, less than, overlooked, desperate, frustrated, will do anything for attention from, from you if you fit in this other box that it may be somebody like you. So when I was growing up, oh, God rest his soul, I think he passed away, but Action Jackson, Action Jackson was an actor and he looked similar to me. People say, man, you look like Action Jackson. 
and I can't remember the young man's name, but I think he he I think he he I think he passed away. And it could have been suicide, but I'm not sure. Um but people say, Man, you look like Ashley Jackson. So on the TV, I had representation. And then later, Chris Paul was in the NBA, Dwayne Wade in the NBA, and people say, man, you look just like, you remind me of Chris Paul when I started working with the athletes. And then other people say, man, you look like Dwayne Wade. Then some places I go, white people will say, you look like Kanye West. So I had representation. People who look similar to me had been chosen to make it and given a pathway to make it. So that reinforced me and like oh okay you know they 510 you know this person 510 he made it so it ain't it ain't too bad that i'm two inches on the six feet but if you look out there and your representation in the magazines and the movies is not what you want it to be it ain't looking up for how you want it to be then it's like you could internalize that and say oh that's me Oh man, all the field, man. See, I knew I was ugly. I knew I was undesirable. And they did the the movie where the the lady, she had she taller, you know, she more of a shape. The Caucasian lady that played the movie, maybe it's called Pretty Thing, or I don't know what it's called, Pretty Like Me, or something. But it's to where when it's her in her normal skin, she not talked to she not liked when she bump her head and she look in the mirror and she look like what the world praises she get all their confident so she out here dating and she pulling all these men and she think it's because she look like the quote unquote blonde bombshell but she still look the same and she don't understand that she still look the same you seen the movie and what she later realized at the end of the movie, like, wow, I was always the same person, but because I saw myself differently, I had more confidence. And I remember walking with my wife in the mall. We had just met. And I tell this story before. I've told it before. If 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 you listen, if you done heard the story before, you're an OG. God bless you. Now this here shirt, this say raise the flag. This here Super Bowl champion. Ah, don't worry about that. <laughs> If you don't, you don't go for the bucks, you don't live in town, you ain't got to worry about it. Don't worry about this shirt. Ah, Y'all ain't got one of these this year. Don't worry about it. And me and my wife was walking, and it was, a, it was a woman who, you know, her hips, you know, her hip set was about, if my wife was this size, this woman was about this size. She was about two to two and a half the width of my wife, her hips. But she, this sister had on leggings. This sister had on leggings. And she had that wagon swinging. Do you hear me? Like my homeboys used to say, look like a car door swinging. And she had that thing swinging. And me and my wife walking. And I seen that lady walk. And she had confidence. You, she walking like a gazelle. Huh. 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 She, she just. She flown through the mall. And I said to my wife, she's my girlfriend. We had just met. We had probably been talking mm, maybe a couple weeks. So I could say something like this. Now, you get all the way in. You can't even be commenting on stuff. But at this point, you still kind of like friends. And so I said, you see that? You see that lady over there? You see that girl over there? I probably said that girl because she probably looked, you know, our age. We was in our early 20s. I said, you see that girl over there? I say that right there is sexy. I say that right there is sexiness because she confident. And my wife's like, really? Because, and the reason why she said really she is because the media and the movies don't praise that young lady's body type. But she didn't let that dictate and determine how she felt about herself. And she walked with a confidence that it would have been. And then I will see my wife who had representation in the media, would walk slump. And I made that point to her. Now, later on, had we been close, I, could, I probably could have got slapped. But I made that point to her to say, listen, you know, 
the media is beating up on her and calling her all kind of names. The world may call her overweight, may call her less attractive, may call her, you know, clinical term, may label her as obese. And we look at the word obese as, you know, offensive, derogatory, and, and it is a clinical term, but the connotation of it is it's offensive. If you call somebody obese, that is like a slur. That's offensive. But that is a clinical term on the doctor form. And so this is what the world calling her. But she's saying, I'm not going to let that make me slump. I'm not going to let that make me put my head down. I'm on my journey. I'm on my journey. I'm going to be me and I'm going to embrace every season that I'm in. And so that's the, the, the thing right there that's intangible that, it, that each of us have to have. So I'm on here talking my head off with no college degree. A lady come on here the other day. Oh, you just talk too much. You just talk in circles. You get to the point. Blah! Blah! I didn't take the time to respond to her. I didn't take the time to justify myself. To wave my my credentials, my my resume, read her my bio. Ain't take the time to do none of that. Blah! And get right back on here today. Oh, you finna listen to me? I ain't got no degree from man, but I got wisdom from God. And so, no matter how you built, what your shape is, and you have to believe that you beautiful. You have to believe that you sexy, that you fine. That you can have the man that you want. That you can attract the man that you want. And that confidence, that's going to ooze from you. That's your aura. That that's going to ooze from you. And then that man, he that man, he going to take and look at you and say, wow. Okay, she confident. And then just like you say. So, so see, here's the thing. If, now, like you say, you lost 20 pounds. So what that says is, is that you're not happy or you're not satisfied. You may be happy, but you're not satisfied with your weight. So you say, I want to get some of this weight off of me. Now, you didn't say you're doing that for a man. You may be doing it because you say, well, this is going to make me feel better or it's going to make me healthier. Or the doctor said, this is what I need to do. But for whatever reason, you did it. So you lost 20 pounds. And then now you say, it's terrible how different they treat you. And that goes to show you how perception works. So that's why I tell all of my clients, like, because of perception is reality, even perception is the reality of the person perceiving you. It may not be your reality. A person may perceive you as insecure because of how you look, but you may actually be extremely confident. They don't have their reality of you upended until they come into interaction with you. And then when they interact with you, then they're like, oh, wow. Okay, I see. So now things start to change. So what you have to realize is with this here now, with this here is when you take and you see where this this world is not showing you love and that the, the women like the artist what her name Lizzo and she try to you know she do thongs and naked and trying to do body positive stuff but then at the same time you may see like you could tell there's some insecurity like some things may be forced like some things be maybe trying to force a narrative because of something else in there versus just pure natural confidence confidence don't mean you got to show your whole booty you could be fully clothed and still be confident confident don't mean that just because you have a different body type you got to dress like somebody else who has a different body type you still could dress for your body type and be comfortable even and if you comfortable with a mid drift you comfortable with leggings or whatever you could dress to be comfortable without trying to dress like somebody else and say, oh, she built like this, I'm gonna dress like her to show that I'm confident. You don't have to do that. Because confidence is in the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you communicate, what you demand, what you negotiate when you're in the business room, when you want your salary, 
what you negotiating for that salary, what you allow, what you accept, and what you stop. That's what's going to show how confident you are about yourself. That's what's going to show that. So you have to realize that. And when you get to that place, you get to that point, then you say, okay, all right. So now when you know you, y'all have to give my computer restarts so or make a little noise. When you know you and who you are and you love you and, and you could be on a journey. When you meet a man, guess what? He can love you because he sees you love yourself. And if he sees you love yourself and you working on yourself and you say, hey, well, you know what? I'm this figure, but the doctor said that this is not healthy long term, that I may have some clogging or some clotting or, you know, something going on because my height is not built to carry what I'm, the, the stress that I'm putting on it based on my eating habits. So I'm going to change my eating habits. I'm going I'm to add a workout routine or increase my workout routine. And I'm going to see if that makes a difference. And I'm going to consult the doctors and uh, address the medical issues that I may be facing. And I'm just going to be clicking on all cylinders. And I'm going to do what I can do to be healthy and to live right. And then where my body falls, that's where I'm supposed to be. And that's what you have to do. So the, the thing is, is re, restart my computer. The thing is, don't get comfortable in a place of complacency and say, oh, you know, I weigh this much and this is X amount of pounds more than the average person my height. But I'm just finna rock this out and I'm just finna, you know, just settle here if if it's unhealthy for you. Like my mom, she was full figured, but when she go to the doctor, she'll say, the doctor say, I got a perfect bill of health. Well, not anymore. She kept that. She kept going. Then the next thing you know, the doctor say, you got diverticulitis. Next thing you got, um, you know, diabetes or early um, diabetes, whatever, diabetes one or whatever it's called, two. The way it ain't that bad, the way you need like a lot of medicine, but it's like, hey, you got to get this in line. So it was just a gradual, it was like over the, right in the beginning, it ain't effect. But then over time, if you keep drinking too much sugar, eating too much greasy stuff, you know, not exercising enough, doing these things, then it's going to affect you. So what you have to say, this is what I tell everybody, do the absolute best that you can do. So right now I'm overweight. I'm probably overweight 10, 20 pounds. And for right now, at 36, I'll be 37 on March 8th. For right now, at 36, my metabolism could fight it. But at 46, if I'm still drinking too sweet tea, like I hit me today, had me too sweet tea. So that let me know, Tony, you're not doing the best you can. Just had me some fried chicken wing. I'm a life coach. I'm a relationship coach, not a health and wellness coach. Told them chicken wing. Up from the Chinese, and, and the Chinese could have had some MSG in there. I mean, nah. <clears throat> Woo. but guess what? I got to do better. So now I know, Tony, you can't say, Oh, I'm just gonna love me and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing because I'm not doing the best I could do. Now, when I'm drinking more of this water, I got a full bottle of water here, water ain't. I ain't seen my lips. Full bottle of water here just looking good, making me feel good. Just sitting there. Water ain't getting now sip. Now, when I finish talking, I'm finna go on, hit that whole water. Boom. Now, when they hit that water, and then I'm going to get my shower for the night. Then I'm going to get in the bed and get me some sleep. Now, when I get in that bed and get me some sleep, if I get in that bed before midnight, get me some sleep, now, now I'm going to bed early. Just jump some water. And I had me a water earlier today. But I need to be having four, four of those bottles. I need to drink four of these bottles a day. This one right here may make... This will make my second bottle. So that, that equates to four glasses of water. Need eight. So now, when I'm drinking this water, I'm sleeping right. I'm supposed to work out tomorrow. I canceled it because I got a meeting. So 
my trainer like, man, you keep scheduling meetings with, during our meeting. I'm like, yeah, workout come last for me, but I got to do better. You see what I'm saying? So see, I'm, I'm here being honest with you, all right? Don't try to crucify me for being honest with you. I'm letting you know, ain't nobody perfect. We all got weaknesses. We all need to be growing and getting better. So here I just hit them chicken wings. I should have had me some salmon, as, as we used to say, a salmon. And then one time I ordered some salmon and heard the way that salmon. Man, don't correct me. It got an L in there. Trying to be smart out the mouth. Better yet, I'm finna go. I got to go. You ain't finna get my money and want to come and help salmon. It says salmon. And so I meant I should have had me some salmon, some salmon and some asparagus or some broccoli and i ain't finna get in no argument with y'all about that oh Tony, that ain't real that ain't real vegetables that man-made vegetable you need to listen to dr cb dr sebi he'll tell you and god rest his soul and, and see that be the thing right there everybody don't know everything i was talking to my partner the other day and he said man he said, man, my homeboy, a doctor. And he said, man, listen, live your life. Have balance. You want your burger, eat your burger. You want your slice of pizza, eat your slice of pizza. Work out, drink water, eat your healthy meal too. Don't just go overboard, but live your life. Don't be so strict. He said, man, I see people coming to this hospital that have ran five days a week and ate clean for the last 30 years and they dying. Of something that they cannot cure he say listen man life ain't promised to nobody live your life do it the best you can but don't be so strict on an area to where you can't even have fun at a dinner party because you count macros and micros and ficros and your fico and the way you can't even eat a pasta at your wedding because you so caught up on trying to be this here image and so but at the same time don't go completely overboard so this way you have to find confidence in yourself my wife is a medical student biomedical science bachelor's medical sciences masters so she studied the body and with her she believe in balance if i want to do a keto diet she do not like that if i want to go vegan or something like that she do not like that because she say, listen, your body and your blood type require certain things. So if you're going to get something from chicken, you're going to get something from beef. You ain't got to eat red meat every day, all day. But every now and then your body being blood type, oh, you might need your steak. You got to listen to your body, not what somebody wrote in a book and not what worked for the next person because what worked for them might kill you. So you have to listen to your body and do what you need to do. And she always tell me that. And she believe in balance. She believe in happy weight. You know, she, she don't, it ain't about having no washboard abs because that's not realistic. Because even somebody with washboard abs, the moment they take a day off, they got them a little stomach. Because your body ain't meant to have washboard abs. You meant to have a little stomach for insulation, processing. All them washboard abs, your stomach can't even do everything it need to do in there. You see what I'm saying? And so you have to come to the place to where you know you, to where you study the science of your body and you stop letting somebody push, they diet on you, they regimen on, they workout regimen on you, they eating regimen on you. And you study you and you do the best you can do for you. And then let's say you eating right, you sleeping right, you working out. And your body land at 180, 200, 250. Well, depending on where your body land at. And, and if you got a medical issue and you're doing everything you could do but your thyroid or adrenal gland, whatever it is, is not functioning properly, but you're going to the doctors, you're doing what you're told to do, and this way your body at, and you're doing everything you know to do, 
you got to be confident in that space. You can't be sulking, can't be sad, can't be, oh, man, nobody going to like me. Nobody going to, no, you got to be confident in that space. And then you're going to attract who's for you. You may attract somebody who on the same journey. They may be on the other side because it's petite people who are, are unhealthy. And it's people who are heavier and are healthy. So it go both ways. And you got to look at that. You got to be real with yourself. But at the end of the day, you have to love you. And self-love means you're getting better and you're doing the best that you can do. So listen, I'm finna drink the hell water. But listen, if I'm eating me some good, this water ain't got no flavor. I don't want to wash it down with no water. I want me a little carbonation. You hear me? I need me a little carbonation. Uh, if uh, their carbonation finna hit good with their food, this old water, the uh, water sometimes feel like I'm drinking castor oil. So I'm like, listen, okay, I'm gonna drink the water that I need now, but at the same time, I hit more Sprite. Okay, little Shirley Temple with a little grenadine in there, that grenadine with that Sprite. All right, I walk it off tomorrow. But it's like, hey, my grandma smoked like a chimney in a little '82. The Bible promise was three score and ten. That's 70 years. My grandma got 82 years and smoked like a chimney and had both legs cut off. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm doing better than her. I'm living better than her. I don't smoke like no chimney now. So, Lord, hey, let me see. Let me see 92 at least, Lord, hey. If, Lord, if you feeling it, let me touch 102. Because cause it's a couple things, Lord, that's going to get people to listen to me. One or two things, Lord. If I turn 100... Or if I become a billionaire, that's the only two times that the whole world will listen to you. When you a billionaire or you a hundred. Lord, come on now. Let me, Lord, come on now. Let me do one on. So now everything is in, it's in motion. It's in motion. I talked to the man. He 80 years old. This man looked 65 to me. He said, well, man, I started now at night. He said, I put my feet up in the air. Now, he had now I ain't want a picture no 80 year old man with a feet in the air in the bed with a feet in the air but he said that let that everything drain down because that sugar settle in, the, in your feet he said this his theory he says blood he said his sugar raised blood pressure his sugar got high when he first put them feet up in the air but then after that it started to sell each day it got better and better and better so he said that's what he's doing now putting this he said he put his his, his ankles above his ears or above his shoulders I'm like oh, that's interesting now nah. now he 80 years old now nah, so I said okay I'm 36 so tonight I'm finna be in there with my feet up in the air looking a fool but healthy it might not have nothing to do with health but I'm so finna try it unless I read somewhere that the, you know it's working against me but you see what I'm saying so right now at 36 okay I might have no sweet tea but now nah, Come 40, all right, more water. 45, even more water. More walking. So you're doing things in your season. And you're doing things in balance. And it's realistic. But through every season, you're loving yourself. You're not abusing yourself. You're not traumatizing yourself. You're not beating yourself up. You're not dogging yourself out. You're not operating from insecurity. You're not operating from a scarcity or a lack mindset. You're operating from a place of self-love. And self-love meaning you're evaluating yourself. And every day you're trying to get better than you were the day before. So today I want to go to bed a little earlier than I went last night. Today I want to drink a little more water than I drank yesterday. Tomorrow I'm going to be trying to eat better than I ate today. You see what I'm saying? So that's where you have to get to. And don't worry about what the media say. Don't even, and when these men try it, it's because of their ignorance. It's because of their perception of the world based on what they've been fed. It's not that they innately think that you less than. It's that the media has taught them and showed them and reinforced this preconceived notion, this stereotype over and over and over. And they done bought into it. So you check them, let them know you don't fall inside of that. You read them with your confidence and now you done upended their narrative and now they blown away. So now the next woman they approach who is like you, 
they're going to see her totally different and approach her different because they just got put in place and now they see just because this woman is built like this or this height or whatever don't mean she insecure, desperate, lonely, and just I can shoot my shot however I want to. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. I got to go. We'll talk soon.